Dumont Company brings back to the air the Cavalcade of America. Speaking for the DuPont Company is the widely known news commentator, Gabriel Heater. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to welcome you to a new series of Cavalcade of America in behalf of its sponsors, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. I feel it's a real privilege to be here tonight, as anyone would on a program which has won so many awards since Cavalcade made its debut in 1935. Tonight, the Cavalcade of America will present a story of a beloved American figure, Knut Rockne, a story to captivate every American heart. And in evenings to come, you'll hear stories of such Americans of today and yesterday as the beloved humorists Will Rogers and Mark Twain, baseball's famous Christy Mathewson, the distinguished journalist and editor Edward Buck, and many more. DuPont is proud to announce as our historical advisor for the Cavalcade of America... James Truslow Adams, author of The March of Democracy, The Epic of America, and a vast number of other works, including Founding of New England, which won the Pulitzer Prize for the best book on history a few years ago. And now as the curtain goes up on the new cavalcade, Don Voorhees and the orchestra play the hit tune from Cole Porter's musical comedy You Never Know, at long last, Love. Ladies and gentlemen, another new personality will be with us in this Cavalcade series. His name is Tom Chalmers. Many of us, I'm certain, will never forget his remarkable work as narrator in that epic film, The River. He's a figure in the world of opera and the stage, too. We're happy to have him with us on the Cavalcade of America. Tom Chalmers. Thank you, Gabriel Heater. It's indeed a privilege for me to be associated with the Cavalcade of America. As you said a moment ago, this evening's story is about Knut Rockne, and it comes, I believe, at a particularly appropriate time. Certainly the place of sport is firmly entrenched as a builder of men and of men's character 
in the cavalcade of America. And wherever American football is played, the spirit of Knut Rockne is a legend. The Rockne legend has become a symbol of the finest tradition in American sport. And the world of football will always honor the great coach who devoted his life to the making of men in the shadow of the Golden Dome of the University of Notre Dame. Knut Rockne was born in Voss, Norway, March 4, 1888. His father, Lars, brought the family to Chicago about the year 1893. At that time, Chicago was a city of cobblestone streets, and you could catch a horse car out to the lagoons where they were holding the World's Fair. In this bustling and colorful city, Knut went to Brentano grade school, and over in the Logan Square neighborhood, played with other boys like himself. He began to notice on Saturday afternoons that the bigger boys were playing what was to him a fascinating game. Signal, 8, 38, 12. Hey, get out of the way, Cotton Top. I'd like to play, too. You'd like to play? Get that, will you, gang? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Listen, Runt, we're playing football, see? No game for you. Get out of Whitey. Take a stroll in the park. Yeah, hey, go, go take a walk around the park. Wait a minute, please. I've watched you playing before. Just let me try. You have to know this game, Shorty. What do you know about football? Mm, not the rules and everything. But you could explain them to me. Hike yourself home where you belong, Toehead. Yeah, on yeah, your way. On. Okay, line up, fellas. We're going for a touchdown. Hey, wait a second. You guys got one more man than our side. We'll take the Toehead. Will you? Oh, gee, thanks. Oh, all right, all right. But look alive, will you? Now get down here beside me. All right. What's your name, kid? Knut Rockney. Keep your head up, Cotton Top. I'm coming right through you. Dive at his legs. That'll get him. I understand. Signal. 21. 16, 54, 6. Get him, Canoe. All right. Get him, boy, Canoe. That's filling him. You stopped him cold. That was easy. Too many crickets. You sure caught on fast, Bonnie. Good work, Canoe. Boy. Do you feel all right? Yeah. Sure, I feel all right. Let's do it again. Football became the center of young Canoe's life. In grade school and at Northwest Division High School, he played football and played it well. After finishing high school, Knut had no money for college. But after washing windows, working on a ferry boat, and mail clerking in the Chicago post office, he saved $1,000, whereby he went to Notre Dame. In Soren Hall, he met his roommate, Gus Doré, and they both went out for football. But Rockney studied hard for his chemistry courses at Notre Dame. He got in the dramatic society and played the flute in the school orchestra. He went out for track, and in senior year, edited the college literary annual. During the summers, he and Doré used to work at Cedar Point on Lake Erie. Between chores, they could relax on the beach. What are you doing with that football, Rock? I'm going to use it for a pillow. It's a life. One more year at Notre Dame. Yep. Seniors. I got to hand it to you, Rock. Sure works your way through college. Cleaning up after lab periods, night watchman, waiter. Mm, have to get that degree in chemistry. I got a letter from the coach this morning. Being captain of the football team next year, Rock, there's... Something you ought to know. There's plenty I ought to know. Notre Dame's playing Army. Army? This season. Army's a powerful outfit, Rock. A lot heavier than us. Means a lot to Notre Dame. First big game in the East. Wabash, Ohio Northern. We're up against real competition now. Competition? Well, just a workout for Army. We'll be lucky to hold down their score. All right. We're going to lick them. Gus, I've been studying up on this football business. Yeah? And I got an idea. Listen. Eastern teams don't think much of the forward pass. Midwestern tactics. They build beef teams. Just keep hitting the line and outpunning each other. Let's pass the Army Dizzy. Yeah. Pass, Rock. You're quarterback on the team, Gus. I'll be at end, all right. Look, how about practicing up on that pass? Here? Sure. Take this football. Come on, Gus. I'll go out for it, okay? Sure, Rock. All right. Even where I'm supposed to be. Okay. There it is. Perfect. Nice catch. Try it again, Rock. Okay. Let her go. Pass it further this time. Way out. All right. This one will have a zip on it. That day on the beach at Cedar Point, Doré and Rockney developed the forward pass. And later in the fall, they had so systematized it that Notre Dame defeated a powerful Army team 35 to 13. Army used it a few weeks later to defeat what appeared to be a better Navy team. Rockney's theory and the basis of his whole conception of the game was that football required brains rather than brawn. After Knut graduated, magna cum laude with a B.S. in pharmacy, 
He taught chemistry at Notre Dame, working with the great chemist, Father Newland. He also was assistant football coach. One day on the practice field, he saw a tall boy drop-kicking about 50 yards in ordinary shoes. Hey, bud. Yes? Where are you from? Tell you, Matt. Play any football in high school? Don't care for football. Rather play baseball. What are you doing out here kicking those drops? Exercising. Yeah? What made you come to Notre Dame? Friends. Get yourself a suit tomorrow and come out with a freshman. You ought to make a good football player. All right. If you think I can help. I think you can. What's your name? Gip. George Gip. Rockney trained George Gip, and the boy played on the Notre Dame team during the seasons from 1917 to 1920. Later, Rockney wrote of him. I hope I'm pardoned for speaking in this paternal way of the boy, because I felt the thrill that comes to every coach when he knows it is his fate and his responsibility to handle unusual greatness, the perfect performer who comes rarely more than once in a generation. After his last brilliant season at Notre Dame, George Gipp contracted a cold that became a mortally infected sore throat. Rockney stayed constantly at his bedside. Well, Gipper, old man, how's it going? Not... Not so hot, I guess, Rock. Gipper, I've got something to tell you. What is it, Rock? I just got word. Water Camp's named you All-American fullback. Rock? Yeah, Gipper? It's all right. I'm not afraid. Sometime, Rock, when the team's up against it, when things are wrong and the brakes are beating the boys, tell them to go in there with all they've got and win just one for the Gipper. I don't know where I'll be then, Rock. But I'll know about it, and I'll be happy. Notre Dame, seven. Nebraska, nothing. Notre Dame, 19. Carnegie Tech, nothing. Notre Dame, 25. Princeton, two. Notre Dame, 35. Georgia Tech, seven. Notre Dame, 28. Army, nothing. It was the beginning of the Rockley era. His great Notre Dame 11s fired the imaginations of thousands. High school, prep, and college squads began to adopt the Notre Dame system. One day, Rockley saw four frisky boys working out with the Notre Dame freshman team. He began to train them carefully, and after almost three seasons of brilliant playing, these four boys thrilled thousands at the Army game in 1924 with their unequaled speed, grace, and precision. Grantland Rice immortalized them in American football when he wrote, Outlined against the blue-gray October sky, the four horsemen rode again. The four horsemen of Notre Dame. Harry Stuldreyer, Don Miller, Elmer Layden, and Jimmy Crowley captured the heart of American football. And their colorful career reached a climax during their last game at the Rose Bowl against Stanford in 1925. Outside the Notre Dame dressing room, everybody was talking about the thrills of the first half. Old grads crowded around Rockney. You like living out here in California, huh? Sure do, Rock. Came out after graduation. Oh, say, uh, all right if I go in the dressing room with you? Well, sure. Come on. You used to be on the team. Seems like old times, Rock. What's going on? Listen. Never mind. You can't pull that on me. You heard the rules, didn't you? One of the four horsemen, isn't it, Rock? Yeah, arguing with the manager. Let's go over and get in on it. All right, sure. I said I want a new belt. You heard me. Okay, okay, but turn in the one you've got. That's the rule. Why should I? I have to keep the rules. Why shouldn't you? Just a minute, young man. Who do you think you're talking to? Do you realize that's one of the four horsemen? Oh, you don't say. Why, everybody knows that. Hey, fellas. He's one of the four horsemen. One of the four yeah. horsemen. Well, I guess my old belt's okay. <laughs> Everybody down. All right, now, listen. Well, here it is, the first half. I know you scored more touchdowns than Stanford. Uh, Pop Warner says Stanford's out playing us. Made more first downs. That's like saying they don't count runs that come across a plate in baseball. Just the men standing on the bases. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny, Crowley. That Stanford defensive half smeared you more than once out there. I, uh, I ought to have cut back. I had no idea he was so fast. 
That wasn't your mistake. Well, that was it, all right. Oh, no. How could he know who he was tackling? If you'd only let him see those newspaper clippings you've got about how good you are, he wouldn't have dared touch you. Well, you're all right, Crowley. Well, Rock, I better be getting back to my seat. Nice to have seen you again. Good luck. Rock, uh, come over here a second. All right. Take it easy, boys. Yeah? What is it? A little tough on the four horsemen, weren't you? Crowley and the boy who won a new belt? Listen, the four horsemen are the best backfield in football. I'm proud of them because they've kept their head. Look, boys don't pay any attention to sermons, see? You've got to teach them in their own coin. Give them a quick comeback. Well, it's the same lesson, more effectively, that's all. <laughs> You've got a point there, old man. Thanks, Rock, and so long. Goodbye. All right now, boys. Listen. Now I tell you, we're not going to win this next half. Unless we have teamwork. That's what counts in this game. Teamwork. We've got to get ourselves set up as a unit. If we do that, why, we've got nothing to worry about. All right, now. After we see the kickoff, I want you to use those heads in there all the time. I want that line in there, charging low. Take your man out of every play. Come up fast, come up fast. I want you boys in the backfield hitting that old line in there. Right side, left side, right, left, right, left. That's where we're going to get them going. When we get them going, men, we're going to keep them going. We're going to push them right down that old field, right down that field, over that goal line, that old Notre Dame spirit. They can't stop us. Nobody's going to stop us. We're going in there. In the first kickoff, we're going to drive, 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 drive. Get them. Come on, get them, get them, get them. Knut Rockney always sent his teams out on the gridiron inspired. He taught those boys how to play smart, strategic football, yes. But Rockney took football and made it the proving ground for training a boy's character. A boy learned how to take the breaks without getting sore or swelled-headed and found that pluck and quick thinking in a situation counted, whether he was after a touchdown or success in later life. But Rockney's Notre Dame teams didn't always win. There was that game in 1925 when Army walloped the fighting Irish 27 to nothing and Rockney had to take a beaten team back to South Bend. Fine time to get in, Rock. 4.30 in the morning. After that army defeat, we're all kind of glad to slip in before daylight. Students usually come down to welcome the team back, don't they? Sure. After victories. Don't forget we lost that army game. What happened to the boys in New York, Rock? We just met a better team, that's all. Army licked us proper. Well, we're in. Holy cats, Rock. Look at that crowd. It's the whole student body. It's this hour of the morning. Come on. Let's go out on the back platform. Sure. Well, there's real spirit for you. A lot of people from South Bend here, too. All right. All right. Don't you people ever go to bed? You don't know. You don't know what this reception means after Saturday's game. Nice to win, to come back after a licking and find you cheering as if we'd won our greatest triumph. Well, it's too much. I just want to say that a team can't help working its head off for you people. You can't beat that old Notre Dame spirit. <laughs> Rockney was an energetic man, quick-thinking, witty, and brilliant. His understanding of boys was uncanny. There's that army game in 1928. Between the halves, the Notre Dame team is exhausted. The boys can't see how they'll hold that mighty cadet 11 for another half. Rockney frowns and takes off his hat. Boys, the score is nothing-nothing. We've been beaten by Georgia Tech and Wisconsin. Sports writers say Army is going to trim us to a fairly well. I'm going to tell you something I've kept to myself for years. None of you knew George Gipp. But you knew what his tradition stands for at Notre Dame. Well, about the last thing he said to me was, Rock, when the team's up against it, when things are wrong, and the brakes are beating the boys, tell them to go in there with all they've got and win just one for the Gipper. I don't know where I'll be then, Rocky said, but I'll know about it, and I'll be happy. I haven't anything more to say. Okay, boys. Let's get one for the Gipper. Come on. Come on. 
Out through the lower corridors of the stadium stormed an inspired Notre Dame team. Running out of the field before thousands of spectators, they again faced a confident Army 11, but the tide was turned. Notre Dame, playing fierce, indomitable football, swept the cadets back to their own goal line, conquering 12 6 as the shout went up. That's one for the Gipper. And Rockney's Notre Dame was on the march again. Notre Dame 26, Northwestern 6. Notre Dame 14, Navy 7. Notre Dame 35, Pittsburgh 19. Notre Dame 14, Indiana nothing. Rockne had an American way of doing things. He wanted to improve what he found. He taught boys to become men, to overcome odds and respect others. To him, that was important in the boys' education. Rock spoke about education often, sometimes before cheering Notre Dame men at mammoth campus rallies, when the big blue and gold pennants fluttered from the ceiling and the band played in the crowded hall. five victories, five ties, and only 12 defeats. In other words, our coach, Knut Rockney. Yeah! Those cheers aren't for me. Those cheers are for the Notre Dame spirit. <laughs> Speaking for our teams at Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, yeah! we've played... All over the country, we've gotten to learn that Southerners aren't lazy, that Northerners aren't cold, that Midwesterners aren't hicks. <laughs> I should have known better than Indiana school. But that's the important contribution of education in American sports. And so, as each football season draws to a close, let us remember we've taken one more step in this process of understanding. Let us remember that what we're doing here goes out beyond the campus of Notre Dame. Let us remember that the American spirit of good sportsmanship carries with it high and fervent ideals. And let us remember that the noblest work of man is forming the character of man. That we must strive with whole souls, with burning hearts and implacable minds to promote the clean, patriotic development of our youth that ours is not only fine sentiment, inspiration, and color, but deep and lasting responsibility. And to the glory of that great name, Harry Stuldreyer, one of the four horsemen, wrote of Knut Rockney. As you would wish it, we, the Notre Dame boys, are going to carry on for you. We're going to try to spread your doctrines and your ideas. If we are able to give to our boys just a small part of the many things you have given to us, we shall have done something for you. Can't you see it, Rock, as we see it? That the boys we teach will go out and teach other boys, and they in turn will teach others. It'll be beautiful, Rock, the Rockney tradition. Frank Caridio, Mississippi State. Frank Thomas, Alabama. Rip Miller, Navy. Adam Walsh, Bowden. Noble Kaiser, Purdue. Harry Stuldreyer, Wisconsin. Marty Brill, LaSalle Institute. Marty Schwartz, Creighton. Jimmy Crowley, Fordham. Tom Keneally, Rutgers. Slip Madigan, St. Mary's. Elma Layden, Notre Dame. Knut Rockney's boys. Those are some of them. There are scores of others keeping alive the legend of Rockney in American football.
Gabriel Hito, what are the lessons of life that men learn in the give and take of clean American sport? To stand up and take it, in good weather and bad, to keep fighting no matter what handicap we carry, as millions of Americans have been doing night and day, waiting for a turn. That's my news tonight. The better days which are coming down the road to meet us. Maybe you don't care for figures any more than I do. But there are times when they tell a story as compelling as any you'll find in fiction. A story of better times. Every business barometer tonight points one way, forward. And if you look around, you'll see it and feel it, expressed in two words, returning confidence. The confidence we all feel and share tonight in America. All right, here's a headline in millions. Eight million dollars, which DuPont is spending for a new textile fiber plant in Seaford, Delaware. Just a little town, like towns you know all over America. And showing so well what happens when business has foresight and courage to invest in America's future. Yes, it requires investment to put men to work. The chemical industry has to invest more than $8,000 in plant and equipment for each and every employee. Today in Seaford, Delaware, surveyors are busy, busy with their equipment on a 340-acre site of a new DuPont project. And all over town you find bustling activity, happy, confident faces, the butcher, the baker, the druggist, the gasoline station on the corner. All sense a return of confidence. All know that they, too, will share in the better times on the way. And about a year from now, when the plant is finished, it will create work for more than 1,000 men. Steady jobs for men who face new opportunity. Jobs born of research and a hunger for better living. Men producing a new material discovered by DuPont Research. The most welcome headline of all. Men working. Because American industry, genius, and enterprise reach out every day toward new frontiers of better living. Your home and mine. The better living born in a wonderland of chemistry and inspired by a timeless DuPont pledge. Better things for better living through chemistry. Next week at the same time... DuPont again presents the Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.